And also this morning, co-hosting for the first time in a few months, uh, the mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Knuckles Nolsey. Good morning, Kevin. How are you? <laughs> no, I, don't, so I don't know where he comes up with these nicknames, <laughs> but, but once he does, it sticks. That's, it's you, uh, it's you, stuck. That's you, sure. Yeah. You walk anywhere in the community, and you're no longer known as Kevin or Mr. Mayor. You're known as Knuckles. Yeah, I, was, I was walking down the aisle at uh, Martins, and I heard some, hey, Knuckles. <laughs> Like, who, call, who said that? Who called who you that? Who said that? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, I think you, they said it and hid. It's not an official <laughs> nickname until somebody who heard you being called that on the radio or TV actually refers to you as that nickname, which is awesome. But the number of people that listen to you is quite large. So that mean the whole community now knows Kevin as Knuckles. There's Knuckles. a lot of people yeah. out there. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to Michelle Coffey. We were having the paper pickup Burke Community Pride on Saturday. And and it was a cold, cold, cold day. It was cold. And she brought some paper out, and we visited for a few minutes. First time I had a chance to meet her, so uh, she's a. You take free, cardboard too? We take cardboard. I got well. a bunch if you want it here. Yeah, we would like it. Yeah. Yeah, and she's a sweetheart, though. She, yeah. And um, uh, she, she's a contributor to the uh, uh, to our Facebook chat page on a regular basis as well. So. So you mentioned ten dollars at the top of the show here, and my ten dollar story is I bought a Mega Millions ticket late last week and on saturday morning i checked the numbers and my mega ball matched now first thing i saw is that the jackpot had been reset to 20 million which means that somebody hit it for the 1.35 billion so i checked the mega ball my mega ball matched i'm like it could be me i look at another number it matched now i got one plus the mega ball. i would have stopped rob i would have stopped <laughs> I look at a second number, it matched. I got two plus the mega ball bill. I'm three numbers away from a billion dollars. The other three were close but didn't match. Yeah. So I look up the prize, like, you know, what's the prize for two numbers plus the mega ball? And it's $10. So it's kind of funny that you mentioned you would give me $10. Today, Bill, I don't need it. I got my own $10. Well, you know, we can split that $10, Rob. Right? Oh, now you want to part of that. Now I want to part. I, now you want I, a was, piece. I was going to give you some if I'd had two numbers plus the Mega Million. Well, let me give, tell me, you. give me a nickel. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, that's what he would. Here's yeah. what I'm going to do. You started off initially by saying you were going to give me $100 if you wanted. That, that, that was then foolish. You, that's foolish. Cut it down to, to 10 which is 10% of $100. I will scale the exact same ratio for you on the ten dollar prize down to a dollar. I'll give you a buck. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> quick, he was quick on that one. He's quick on that one. I'll take the dollar. <laughs> yes, with what's happening to Tesla stock, I can understand why you'd like that dollar. <laughs> yeah, I want to trade Elon Musk for another CEO. <laughs> <laughs> well, ever since the whole Twitter fiasco, that's really taken its toll on yeah, Tesla. It really has. There's other variables as well, sure. but I, I think. The the stock will come back. I'm still optimistic for the simple reason is Tesla has an infrastructure for recharging stations that no other manufacturer That's correct. has. That's right. Yeah. Uh, financial Phil, who would otherwise address Tesla stock, will not be with us today as uh, markets are closed today for the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. So Financial Phil has a holiday from the show today, too. He's back mm -hmm. uh, before his morning reports tomorrow. Well, wait a second now. He gets to take the day off and sleeps in. Yeah. Ke the mayor, Knuckles, and I have to come in. <laughs> what? Well, what's the difference? Why, why is McCoy in here? Answering our questions. Well, uh, well we see who the most are. important people are that need to be working and doing. It so. really came down to this. Knuckles is here because I invited him in, and he said, yes, you're here because I invited you in, and you said yes. Foolishly. Phil texted me yesterday and said, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so I had no options at that point. <laughs> he said I won't be in tomorrow, so not doing the not doing the show. I'm like, okay. It's funny you're talking about Tesla. Every I've been doing a lot of traveling, and everywhere I go, that all those uh, charging stations are are Tesla charging stations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Musk did a very smart thing up front. And he has charging stations uh, along all major routes. For a while, the only place you could not get recharged uh, was in North Dakota. That has been rectified. Uh, 
mentally you have to stay close to the internet system but if you do there's charging stations everywhere but the interesting thing or the i think uh wise thing on my uh, musk part up front is that a tesla can charge with other stations other type of chargers but the the other manufacturers cannot charge on a tesla station hmm. so if you pull in so you have to have a tesla to charge on a tesla exactly right exactly right yeah Oh, wow, that's a. Well, I guess that's a marketing. It's a marketing too. Yeah, you if you have an, another uh, another manufactured EV, uh, then you take great exceptions to it and say that's not fair. But if you're a Tesla owner, it is fair because you that means you do not have a long line mm-hmm. of folks in front of you to recharge. So it's a uh, we have never never had to wait a single minute to recharge. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't see them backed up. Yeah. What do they charge for that? I don't. Uh, I'm grandfathered in. I don't pay anything. So, so with the buying of your vehicle, yeah. you are grandfathered. I, I was. Someone else was it you, Rob? No, someone's telling me they charged uh, about twenty five dollars. They rented one. They rented one in Florida a couple of months ago. I know it was Gary Wine. He said he had to pay around twenty five dollars to recharge. And how long did that charge last? Uh, probably another t- uh, two hundred fifty miles, three hundred miles. Cheaper than gas. Yeah. It, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Which at uh, the Warm Springs Exxon is three twenty five nine this morning. I know that because I pass it each morning. <laughs> unless you unless you have a diesel truck, then it's still oh, four twenty nine four. Diesel's very expensive. Is that, you have a diesel to yeah. knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't run it every day, Admiral. <laughs> <laughs> not not at that what, much. See what you've done, Rob. Not at that price. I've known Kevin for 25 years yes. as Kevin. Now, all of a sudden, I know him as Knuckles. You can forget about that, though. <laughs> does it Knuckles work better, though? Yeah, it does. It flows. It just right? flows. Yes. Knuckles knows. Well, it, hey, you know, I, alliteration. I, let, let's, let's go back to why you call me that. Because uh, I, I used to box, and that's, yeah. that's oh, where that came from. And uh, it's not that I did anything... Yeah, sure. If that's the story you want to go with, yeah, yeah. that's fine. That's interesting. (laughs) I'll go with that. Sure. I thought he called you that because you walked down the hallway, your knuckles dragged (laughs) on the carpet. Well, you know, back in the day, that might have happened. (laughs) May have been true. Yeah, it was a heck of a football weekend. Did you catch any of the NFL playoff games? Uh, Everyone except the first one, the San Francisco game. All of the other games were pretty good. Yeah, they, they were. Last night's game, I heard about it, and that was a very uh, – it could have sh- – should have and could have been the other way around, but with that fumble on the goal line and uh, – That's a tough one. 98, 99 yards running back. Right. But it was a fumble. Yeah, it, it was a fumble. Exactly. Not, it did not you break know, the line. You know, I think – talk to the uh, football expert across from it that when you reach the ball out which everybody does now that is that's prone to ha- uh, happen it's, dang- it's a dangerous I'm, I'm, move. I'm, I'm surprised move. it does not happen more often than what it did last night well they tell you there's a risk with that yeah. and it's uh risk just risk. happened yeah, uh, yeah it's, <laughs> sometimes it's not worth taking that risk you got to make sure yeah. you understand what the defense yeah. is uh, yeah. that's against you you know uh, trevor lawrence uh, i think it was trevor lawrence did that and uh, but I noticed the defense he was going up against didn't have a middle linebacker, so as he reached across, he was he was safe doing that. Last night, a little different for the Ravens. Yeah. Plus, he was uh, he had to reach farther as well. If it had been That's within part. six inches or so uh, closer, it would have gotten across the goal line before before they had a chance to punch it out. So. Yeah, uh, the Jacksonville game, uh, the Jags were down twenty-seven nothing, and Trevor Lawrence looked awful. That's right, three turnovers, three yep. passes, three picks. And I just tuned in as they were scoring at the end of the half, so that made it 27-7. And then the second half was just a matter of time, it seemed, before they came back and won that game. And uh, that's a if you're a Jacksonville fan, there's a lot to like there because Trevor Lawrence, the first year under Urban Meyer, was a disaster. And now they've got an actual NFL-quality head coach there, and he looks a lot better. Uh, and, and then you you also look yesterday the Miami Buffalo game was fascinating because Miami's quarterback Skylar Thompson who's he was he was I think a seventh round pick uh, he didn't play that well he went horrible uh, he, he could have been helped if Tyree Kill and, and Waddle wouldn't have been dropping so many passes as the day went along there but nevertheless his stats were atrocious but the defense for Miami. Just kept them in the game, and they and then special teams had a long punt return too. They just kept 
chipping away. They were down 17 nothing early. And eventually the defense put them ahead 24-20 uh, before the offense kind of took a quarter off. And then the Dolphins' offense started getting some life again late, too. That turned out to be a pretty good game. Uh, yesterday too, and Miami was lucky to win. Everybody thought Buffalo. You mean Buffalo uh, was lucky walking to win. away? Buffalo. Yeah, I'm sorry, Buffalo yeah. was. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. But everybody thought it'd be a runaway game, and Buffalo just barely squeaked the victory out. You no, know, even that San Francisco game in the first half, you know, it looked like it was going to go either way. Mm-hmm. And then all of a second, the second half, 25 points, boom, that was it. You know, uh, San Francisco's interested in this guy, uh, Purdy, uh, Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy, uh, and he was a very low draft choice, seventh round, and uh, nobody had very much. Uh, uh, anticipating he's going to do that well and he's having an all pro oh, season he's having and an if you look at his statistics compared to some of the <laughs> giants of the game he's uh, he's right up there with the very best of the best you know he is surrounded by a great team it kind of reminds me of ben roethlisberger's rookie year when he came in in 2004 he had around him a steeler team that was already really good and all he had to do was kind of manage the game make a play here and there just don't lose it and let the rest of the team do what they do and San Francisco's got such a very you – know, they've got a great team. Yeah, they could win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, they do have a good team, but you don't take anything away from Purdy. because No, he's, he's playing he, great. He, he's playing great, and he's able to – he's throwing a very high percentage of completions. And he's well, got his, a great coach. His, his numbers show it. I mean, yeah. he, sure. he, he's, he's set some records that Montana and the rest of the other guys have not mm-hmm. set. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's great to watch him play. It's great to watch young – Young talent come up that haven't been like number one picks, number mm-hmm. two picks, but you know he's look at Brady. I mean, what what round was he when he sixth went? round pick, sixth round pick, and look where he's at today. So I let's go back to the guy that's sleeping in this morning while the while Kevin and I are out financial working. Phil financial Phil. Tell him we can discuss football without him. <laughs> I guess he just figured that out. Well, it's, if it's not Pittsburgh, he doesn't discuss. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're talking about how much he dislikes Washington. That's right. Right. <laughs> Got some opinions on that. He does that. <laughs> uh, Mayor uh, Knowles also has a second job too, and that's as the executive director of the Home Builders Association which, uh, again, in March, will be making an appearance at the Roundhouse. Yes, uh, we're going to have our second year of uh, the home show at the Roundhouse. Last year, it's going to be March 24th, 25th, mm-hmm. uh, Saturday and Sunday, last Saturday and Sunday of March. And uh, we're, we're real excited. I mean, last year we had it. Uh, we didn't know how it was going to go. Of course, the week before, the weather was in the 70s. And, and then uh, when we had the, the home show, the, the weather dipped quite a bit and Dipped is not the word. It was very, very cold. <laughs> plummeted. <laughs> plummeted is the word. It was very cold, but uh, needless to say, we still had 3,500, 4,000 people come through the Roundhouse, not only for the home show, but people that came through that never even have been at the Roundhouse that didn't even, some people didn't even know it was there. And, uh, you know, we've we've been able to learn from some of our um, first time, I don't want to say mistakes, but things that we didn't think about, you know, uh, the first year, you know, parking's going to be a little bit better. Although parking was great, uh, we didn't have any issues getting people in and out. Uh, the city was uh, really great at, at uh, identifying all of the uh, the uh, parking lots. Uh, be, they, they don't charge on the weekend, so there's a there's three or four parking lots right there within two blocks of the roundhouse. We were able to use access. You're talking about on the railroad uh, on the Martinsburg side of the on the tracks. Martinsburg side. Yeah. You know, you have you have uh, Martin Street. You have two parking lots there. You got, and, and you have that walk, uh, the crossway to walk yeah, over. So the, yeah, so that's where they would come in. They yeah. would come o- over the crosswalk. Plus, people, uh, I, we probably parked close to 500, 600 cars uh, right on site. So, I mean, we were we were very, very good at getting the traffic in and out, and uh, we're real excited. We signed a, a five-year uh, contract with uh, the Roundhouse Authority to be able to continue to have this big event. Uh, the Roundhouse Authority has been really good at, at getting things prepared and everything ready for this event because it, it is the biggest event that they've had uh, with that many people coming through at one time. And as you know, it's an, it's it, there's going to be people there from probably Wednesday through Monday because you're going to have your you know people coming in, setting up, breaking down, and we have a lot of different things going on. We have food trucks that are going to be there to be able to to help with people that want that that are hungry and and uh, be able to uh, service people as as, as they come in. What's the status of the building now? 
Kevin. I know they put a lot of money into it originally for structural integrity and the, the roof and the repoint and the like. What's the building itself? So uh, when you say status, I mean... Uh, they, they they have restrooms now. Yeah, the restrooms, are, unfortunately, the restrooms uh, during that cold... There was some there was some damage because of uh, how cold it got. So they're they're rectifying that. That's going to be fixed, and and I would imagine that that, that will be taken in consideration. Low uh, weather that we had, which was pretty much abnormal, you know, down in the single digits, but below zero in that area, and and that building there, uh, I believe, is just uh, getting ready to build the the elevator and the stairs for the second floor. Um, there is a plan to have the um, the floor uh, concreted at, at this point, and that's, and I'm going to get the names of the building wrong, but that's the long building to the left if you're looking at it. And um, that second floor, is there's a study being done by some engineers to see what, if anything, we can have on that second floor because it is, it was built back in the, back in the day when they, you know, they really didn't have these kind of regulations that we have today, and, and it's a floating floor, so uh, although they had engines sitting on there for years up there, uh, we have to, you know, they have to figure out how many people or the capacity that it could have based on or if there has to be any, uh, any more fortification done to the floor. Where's the money coming from? Now, it's, well, the city has, has uh, allocated money through the ARPA, uh, the f feds, uh, there was, I believe, seven hundred and some thousand dollars that was designated from the, the federal government. I know the county has in, uh, has uh, invested some money, so uh, they've gotten some grants. So they're they're moving forward, Bill, a lot quicker, a lot faster than they were in the past. Uh, I I believe that for the city of Martinsburg that that is a a jewel right in the middle. It and, really is, yeah. And, and I'm gonna we are. I'm going to try to do whatever I can to make make sure that that, that place becomes a viable um, a viable place for for events. Because keep in mind we have our um, Frog Hollow Trail, which opens up uh, the end of probably the end of spring this year. They're working on it right now. That goes right into the to the uh, the plan is to go into the Roundhouse, to the Roundhouse, come out and then uh, end up at War Memorial. Hopefully, go through Lake Thomas and all that. But our first phase of our Frog Hollow Trail is going to be done here by the by springtime. That's going. That's the one that's going to connect into the bikeway uh, along Highway Nine. That's uh, that. That's the plan that uh, the, the county, the last county council, had talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, whether that's something that they continue to move forward with or not, but but that would be the plan. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything materially different about the building that people will notice this year versus last year at the home show? No. No, uh, you know the the year prior, prior to the la the first year that we had it last year, uh, they put a new roof on, so that was a big help. So it's nice and dry, uh, and even if it's cold out, if it's sunny out, that place heats up from the the glass and the windows, and the, just the the sun brings a lot of heat in there. Now help me on this, uh, Kevin, because I I've gotten a lot more than I ever knew about it and i did not know a lot about it initially uh but that building is unique there's only one or two roundhouses in the in the u.s similar to it and a couple of those this is only one remaining of that particular uh, design that's my understanding yeah. that this is there's only two like this in the united states and uh, I, I don't know the status of the other but uh, you've traveled up to the Scranton area. I have, yes. And uh, yes. they have a, a wonderful they steam yeah. town there, and, and they've built a wonderful facility there and refurbished a lot of things there. And, and you know, I, I, you know, I've interacted with some of the people up there to see, you know, what if anything that, that they did that maybe we can do uh, or they can do, because uh, the Roundhouse Authority is its own entity. Uh, the, the county doesn't own the city doesn't own it's It's... Uh, it's very complicated. This is the first uh, first year in the last year that the the city has able been able to make their own appointments. Uh, we used to have to just recommend people to the county, but we worked out the county was able to give us three appointments on our own, and uh, we're hoping to to gather more. And you know, who knows? Some some day down the road, uh, hopefully, if, if if at all possible, we can see what we could do to maybe uh, you know, hopefully take that over and run it. Yeah, I agree with you. It is a jewel. It's a jewel for the city. It's a jewel for the county. The problem from day one, though, is the amount of money it 
take to uh, to get it uh, in a workable formation. At the early days, only uh, Senator Byrd was the only one providing money to it, and the money he provided all had to be done for the most basic of basic things to uh, uh, for the structural integrity. So. Yeah, well, I, I think you know now that they have the uh, earmarks back a little bit, yep. I think you're going to see. Uh, more of that from from Mansion and Capital, and also they've been working with the state uh, to be able to uh, get some funding from uh, the tourism and also the uh, the arts because it's it's a huge asset uh, in in every aspect. I mean, you can if once if that was up and running, you can have big events there. Who's know? president of the uh, Roundhouse Authority now? Matt Umstead. Matt Umstead. Yeah, Matt Umstead is now the president. Um, he, if you ever want to know anything about it and you have about two hours uh, <laughs> matt will be more than happy to s sit down and talk to you about it hey any thought of moving with the roundhouse being uh, obviously subject to the weather as much as it is any thought to moving the home show back another week or two where you march is such an iffy thing with weather well they 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 everybody asks that but if you look at all home shows the reason why they're held in that that part of the year or that time is because people set up their uh, they set up all of their contracts and everything from that point on. They get very busy starting April, mm -hmm. so it takes uh, a lot of time and effort for us. Yes, but so those, those other home shows are usually indoors, or if they're outdoor, they're in a warmer climate. Well, we are indoors. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of indoor. We are indoors. You're kind just, of indoor. Just you'll be dry, Rob. Just wear a couple of extra sweaters. Well, and Rob, a big, oh, and a, I don't think I don't think, I don't think Rob's going to be there. Are you going to be there this year? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. But. Um, our hopes is that we have that better weather. I mean, I mean that was a that was an odd weekend in in March in my book. Hey, a couple of questions for you from David Anderson, who I know you know quite well. First and foremost, will we break ground for a West Side fire station in 2023? Uh, the answer to that would be no. Um, we would not in 2023, but I can't say that uh, we are uh, out looking for property for that to happen. Uh, we don't have property purchased to make that happen as of yet, so that takes time. And just like anything else, uh, to build a new building, we would have to have, uh, you know, concepts done, studies done, and 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 such as that. And, and David is, uh, you know, that government move doesn't move at the speed of light. It it, it takes time to to get it right. Second question from David is, when will the council pick a name for Burke Street Park? Uh, the that's not the council's job. That's a that we, we have given suggestions to the Burke Street, we have to Parks and Rec, and uh, Parks and Rec will be, be naming that. And to be quite honest, uh, that'll be something, David, now that you put in my ear, that I'll double check on to see where we're at with. So Very thank good. you for that. Brad Knoll commented, notice an individual, Rob, wins $10 and everybody wants to take it from him. That is real life. <laughs> You're right. Brad, you are so correct. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter the general wealth of the people around you when you have some money in your pocket, in this case $10. Yeah, people but, want it. But, Brad, that's what's in the dark. You, you and I know I'm not going to get that dollar from him. <laughs> oh, that's not true. <laughs> that is not true. Well, if you, hey, Knuckles is here. You'll get <laughs> Knuckles it. Knuckles collect on. Julie Poolscamp, uh, Julie is a teacher, of course, in the uh, community, has, says, who day, Rob, as in celebrating the Bengals win uh, yesterday over the Ravens. And that circles me back to football before we end this segment. And you look at the, the games that were figured uh, by a lot of people to be blowouts, I think uh, Miami and Buffalo, but that was a divisional game. It was their third meeting of the year. They'd split the regular season meetings, and they were close games, and it was a close playoff game. Bengals Ravens again a divisional matchup they'd split the regular season meetings that was a close game again you could say it came down to two yards you know really uh, at, at the end there uh, and that's the thing about the NFL teams that know each other and have familiarity doesn't matter what the regular season record is any given Sunday 